Hey y'all, it's Neo from the Overclocker Magazine, and here we are, a few weeks removed from the Ryzen 9000 launch, and it's been mixed reactions to say the least. AMD, prior to this generation, seemed to deliver with every release, and in fact, I'd argue that they may have done the same with this generation, where the X3D models are concerned, what we will see in future. Simply put, the 7800X3D was such and is such an overwhelmingly well-received CPU that it's made the job that much harder for the 9000 series, barring the X3D models, of course. Now consider as well that the next version of the X3D CPUs are ratio unlocked and it makes the situation doubly hard for the vanilla 9000 CPUs which we have today. As such, I do suspect that most users are waiting for the X3D 9000 series to launch and the ones that are not are wanting the 7000 series to be heavily discounted before they consider buying anything. This is happening in the US I think and in some other areas but it's not happening right now in SA and as a result the margin or rather the pricing bracket where the 7000 series cpus find themselves versus the 9000 is not doing anyone any favors i mean they just locked in at a very high price and in fact you might even find that like for instance the 9900x is so dangerously close in price to the 7800x3d that it's kind of a hard sell for most people but all that aside, the Ryzen 9 9900X is what we have here today, so I'm just going to focus on that. And in case you're unfamiliar with the specifications, I'll just run through them quickly. So you have two CCDs, right? Six cores on each. And I think they're made on TSMC's 4 nanometer node. But the IOD, however, remains on the older 6 nanometer node from TSMC, which is similar to what we had basically on the Ryzen 7000. In fact, I've been told that these are actually identical. That aside, the CPU has 12 megabytes of L2 cache and 64 megabytes of L3 cache. TDP is set at 120 watts, but I've seen it go well beyond that when we're using PBO and all that good stuff. And talking about PBO, right? So base clocks are 4.4 gigahertz, and PBO on this CPU is supposed to be 5.6 gigahertz, but I've actually seen it sometimes do 5.65 gigahertz or so forth. I'm not sure if this is the motherboard or just the CPU built-in behavior. When using curve optimizer and manual boost settings, you can get the frequency to be as high as 5.75 gigahertz, of course, depending on the workload. The Infinity Fabric, by default, is supposed to be with DDR5-5600, according to the ratio that I respect, which is 1.5, supposed to be 1867 megahertz but it isn't i've seen values like 1750 megahertz sometimes when i was using an earlier bias i would see something like 2000 out the box so i'm really not sure of what it is testing for me was done on the rog strix b650 ef gaming wi-fi using 64 gigabytes of dual rank hick semi future ddr5 memory first at cl28 ddr5 5600 then at cl30 ddr5 6400 for the overclocked and pbo settings all this powered by the mighty XPG Fusion 1600W ATX 3.0 PSU. Now, first up, we have IDA64 memory bandwidth. Because of the layout differences between the single and dual CCD CPUs, we can see the 9900X beat the 9700X despite identical DRAM settings. This is in copy and read performance, but for some reason, the right numbers are higher on the 9700X and I'm not sure why. PBO and DDR5 6400 add more bandwidth to the system, anywhere between 10 to 17 gigabytes a second of bandwidth. Latency is the next test, where we can see DRAM latency on the 9700X and the 9900X is identical. With better timings, DDR5 6400 and an uncode clock that's matched to the memory clock, we reduce this by a healthy 12 nanoseconds. We then go to V-Ray and Cinebench R23. Here we can see the 9900X makes considerable gains over the older 7900X CPU and of course, it's not worth comparing it to the 9700X at all. That being said, the Ryzen 9 9900X is particularly good at V-Ray. In Cinebench 2024, the Ryzen 9 9900X is again superior to its predecessor and rather close to the Core i9-14900K. When PBO and DRAM OC is factored in, it manages to eclipse the 14900K even in the multi-core benchmark result, which is mighty, mighty impressive and unexpected, of course. Handbrake H.264 encoding is where the Ryzen 9 9900X is pretty much neck and neck with the Intel Core i7-14700K and 14900K. As we've seen thus far, adding an overclock improved performance by about 10%. In the CPU Z benchmark, things are rather straightforward. The 9900X is obviously faster than the 7900X by 9% in the single bench in the single core benchmark and about 10% in the multi-core test. Against the i7 and i9, the overclocked 9900X can't quite get there, but does reduce the gap tremendously. We then move on to Geekbench 6, where we can see the generational or IPC gains from the Ryzen 9000 series. 
In the single core result, both 9900X and 9700X are quicker than anything Intel is offering at present. Add PBO when overclocking to it, and the Ryzen 9 9900X delivers a scorching result. A very strong showing for the 9900X here, especially where PBO is used. In the Benchmade 7 zip benchmark, the 9900X when overclocked is at the top, but even out the box results are fairly impressive because it's not too far off from the 14900K performance. PBO again comes to the party, sending the Ryzen 9 9900X to the top. Superbuy 32M is the one that's been dominated by Intel for eons on end, and it's not different here. The 14900K out the box beats all the other entrants here. That being said, I'm not sure why the 9900X is losing to the 7900X here. In the 3 d Mark CPU profiling benchmark, things are back to normal, where the Ryzen 9 9900X takes its rightful position well above its predecessor. Again, I'm intrigued by the single core result, where AMD has clearly made massive gains. To the point where the 9700X bests the 7900X in the one thread result. PBO aside, from the 7900X to the 9900, we see a 7% increase in performance. The last test here is Ycruncher 2.5B, where the Ryzen 9 9900X is flaming every other CPU here like a boss. 41 seconds out the box with an almost 8 second advantage over the 4900K. Add PBO to the mix and it's a good night to every other CPU here. With that said, let's just move on to the gaming benchmarks. So we start with Hitman 3 and immediately the 4900K takes the top spot. But that's not the interesting bit for me. I'm actually curious as to why the 9700X is faster here by sizable margin and this holds true even when PBO is used for both. In this game, the more affordable 9700X is just simply a better CPU. Then in Forza Horizon 5, the 9900X takes the top spot and extends its lead further with PBO when looking at the average frame rates. The 9700X when using PBO manages to match the 4900K. For the horizon, however, seems to excel with AMD CPUs this generation and the previous. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the 9900X once again is outperformed by the 9700X even with PBO applied to both. That being said, it's impressive to see the 9700X go blow for blow with the more expensive 14700K. When overclocks, the 9700X is only second to the 14900K. My last game test is Dying Light 2, where the 9900X finally takes its rightful place ahead of the 9700X, PBO or otherwise. But in this particular game, Intel has the lead, and within the AMD family, the 9700X is again ahead of the 9900X. With that out the way, let's just take a look at the power consumption under heavy stress tests and normal gaming. The 9700X, as it should be here, is the best, peaking at 88 watts for both Cinebench and Cyberpunk. The 9900X has a lower peak power draw than the 7900X, but in the average gaming benchmark power draw is higher at 120 watts. I'm not sure what's happening here, but maybe that's the behavior that is supposed to exhibit. Nonetheless, the 4900K is of course at the bottom as expected. With temperatures are concerned, we see that the 9700X is again at the top with an amazing 55 degree in-game average temperature against the 65 degrees of the 9900X. Still a great result, especially with two CCDs. PBO increases the operating temperature, of course, but it's negligible under gaming loads up by just four to five watts. So right now, the price for the 9900X in South Africa is around 10,000 Rand. And I think on Amazon is like $499. I do know some places have already started discounting these CPUs, not only just the 9900X, but the 96, 97, and the 9950X as well. How far this will go and if it will trickle down to us here in South Africa remains to be seen. However, I will say here in SA in particular, the AMD pricing for the CPUs is rather challenging for the 9000 series because the 7000 series hasn't come down that much in price and it's still available. And the 9000 series CPUs are not as cheap as what we would have hoped they are. So it almost lumps all the CPUs that are available for you to buy into a very small gap or a very small margin. And as a result of it, I think, as I said in the beginning, a lot of people just want to see what the X3D CPUs deliver in terms of performance, but also in terms of pricing and how every other CPU around that adjusts because of the release of these new CPUs, which I know for sure, or rather I suspect were going to be way more impressive than what we've seen thus far. So with that said, let me know what you guys think of the Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. Are you indeed waiting to see what's going to happen with the X3D CPUs? Are you waiting to see what Intel releases and then see the comparison? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. 
And until the next time, please, please do take care of yourselves. Remember to share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. And peace.